What's going on guys, Vulcan here, and today we're talking about Cobalt B. Now I know this video is a little bit later than usual, but the team is hard at work on 2.0, so the creators were not able to get um, access to Cobalt B on the test client, and that's okay. We were able to hop in in kind of the global, the global live version and play and all that fun stuff. So I know it's, it's big creator problems, but anyway, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about this character and whether or not you should pull her, right? Is this somebody that you want to try to build around? And what are kind of my overall thoughts around Cobalt B? So I'm going to give you guys a quick TLDR because I know that's probably all you're here for. Um, right now at this point in time, she is very much nerfed from her CN version. So that seems to be sort of the ongoing thing with all new characters. They are balanced and they're dealing less damage. Overall, they want global to be more balanced and less power crept than we see in the CN version. And that's perfectly fine. Um, in terms of Cobalt, I feel like right now, unless you want to heavily invest all the way to A6 on her, then she's not going to be worth, uh, worth pulling. So I would wait for her to get to standard banner. And then at that point in time, you can try to work up to six. If you really want to build around her, maybe pair her with Ruby or Huma or King or whoever, um, it's really up to you. So that's sort of the TLDR version. Um, if that's all you needed, great. Thank you so much. Um, on the way out, just hit you hit the like button. That helps me a ton. But if you want to stick around for a little bit deeper dive, then please be my guest and we'll go through it. Okay, so let's talk a little about Cobalt B. So one, the big kind of difference between CN and this one, besides the obvious nerf, is the fact that she is an S tier shatter now. So before she was an A shatter and an A charge, and it wasn't exactly exciting. Um, but now she has a higher shatter. So breaking down sort of what she does in terms of her normal attack, it's sort of like we see with all of the other uh, characters. You're gonna have an attack that gets more powerful as you chain more together. Now she does have a pretty cool charge shot ability and there's some sort of hidden things tucked in there that you might not notice at first. So I don't think there's anything I can, oh yeah, here's this water core, this poor, this poor bastard right here. So you can see this, uh, her revolver charging up and usually there's three on this one, there's five. So I let that roll. It's going to deal seven K tick, tick, tick. And then it blows up and deals an additional 3,400. You can see there. So there's some other stuff that I think is pretty slick built into that skill. I'm going to go ahead and get out of combat really quick. So built into this skill, there's obviously the charge shot and then the detonation. However, each time that target is dealt damage before the explosion up to four times, the AOE damage is doubled and the overall damage is doubled, right? Or the AOE range, I'm sorry. The AOE range is doubled and the damage is increased. So not only is it going to deal more damage, but it'll deal more damage to a larger area, which means she is fantastic at AOE damage. And that's something that I've seen and I will applaud Cobalt on is if you can get a group of enemies together, you will deal a ton of damage. I've seen myself using kind of this little setup here, go from maybe third or fourth on the DPS chart all the way to number one. If I can get a group of enemies and just unload either King's like discharge ability and then combo it with barrage from Cobalt, there's just a ton of frontal cone and AOE damage built into Cobalt. It's just, it's wild. So outside of charge shot, we also have jumping blast. Um, this one is just this. So jump and click, and it's gonna deal kind of an explosion right in front of her. And then the other one is you double jump and click, and she'll deal this little kind of line of damage on the ground. So that's sort of what we're looking at in terms of her aerial attacks. And the last branch attack that we need to talk about is heavy bombardment. And the reason I'm calling this one out specifically is because it gets called out on her A3, and this is important. So heavy bombardment branch skill and close quarters dodge attack will inflict ion scorch. So this is something we'll talk about a little bit more here in a second, but I wanna show you exactly which one this is. So as you're attacking, you know, you're kinda just doing your regular attack. So you click, 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 and then you hold, and she'll do this sort of like cartwheel attack here, and she'll deal a bunch of damage in front of her. It doesn't deal a ton, but it's something to, to keep note of. So hopping back over into Cobalt, let's talk about some of the other things she's gonna be able to do. So dodge, she has close quarters. You're gonna dodge back, attack in front of you. Her skill is barrage. 
constant fire in a frontal area cone, um, 666% of attack plus essentially 1900 damage. So that's sort of what this looks like. Basically, it's your like auto shotgun, right? It's exactly what it reminds me of. 60 second cooldown, which is a little intense, but it deals a ton of damage. So if, like I said, if you can group up a lot of enemies all together, it's gonna deal a ton of damage. All right, so let's talk about Discharge. So Explosive Rain, basically this is sort of like um, this one here. So sort of like, you know, these little bombs that we're seeing. She's just gonna shoot out three of them and they're gonna blow up and they're gonna deal a considerable amount of damage. So that's something that you definitely want to um, take advantage of as well. So again, 570% of attack plus 1600 AOE damage and causes launch, so it launches enemies into the air. So those are all her actual attacks, but let's talk about her advancements because I think this is going to be the important thing. Um, one cobalt here has flame resonance. Now, according to some leaks, Ruby also has flame resonance. So don't feel like you have to have cobalt in order to get that flame res. If you don't want to build around her, you don't have to, and you can get Ruby instead. Now it's going to be a little bit of a gamble because we truly don't know what Ruby is going to look like. She could be much worse than cobalt and cobalt might be the de facto uh, core of a fire team. We truly don't know right now, but just know she does seem to have flame res. So um, we're going to have back-to-back -back flame res users. So in terms of advancement, I have her at A1. Now at A0, um, she didn't really seem to do anything better than any of the other DPS characters in the game. She just kind of dealt damage, and I will say it was a little bit lower damage, um, if they're, especially if it was single target. But at A1, she does gain a little bit of ground on other damage dealers, but I would say it's not enough to actually, you know, overthrow like a Samir or a Crow or anyone like that. I do think she still lags behind in that category. But anyway, so we're A1, each round of Barrage, which is the shotgun skill that we just saw, deals additional damage equal to 2% of the target's current HP, and it cannot exceed 180% of your attack. So this can deal some considerable damage depending on what you're attacking. If you're attacking a boss, 2% of their total health is going to be much higher, and you'll probably hit this 180% cap versus attacking like, you know, um, a, a wildlife creature. So this does kind of scale up and down depending on what you're attacking. But the cool thing here is each round of barrage, right? So anything that's caught in that frontal cone of your skill here is going to have that extra damage applied to it. It's not one enemy in barrage. It's not two enemies in barrage. It's every enemy in barrage on each shot. So that's why when you activate this skill, you're gonna go from bottom of the chart to top of the chart, because the more enemies that are in there, the more damage you're gonna be dealing and the more effective you're gonna be at clearing things out. So at three stars, we have heavy bombardment. Now we talked about this, that's that cartwheel attack. And then we have close quarters. Now close quarters is your dodge attack. You jump backwards and you shoot in front of you. These are going to inflict ion scorch. Now ion scorch is something that cobalt B, it's unique to cobalt B. It is a, a debuff that you can apply to enemies. And this is sort of like a secondary burn. So you have the primary burn that kicks off from your flame type here. So when you fully charge your weapon, the next attack is going to set the target on fire for eight seconds and cause damage over time, 58% of attack every second. Now this is important. Reason it's important is because these two attacks, heavy bombardment and close quarters are gonna inflict ion scorch on targets that are already burned. And it's gonna deal flame damage equal to 40% of your attack every second for 10 seconds. So that's 40% of your attack plus 58% of your attack. That's going to be ticking each second if you can manage to get burn plus ion scorch on there. Now the problem is ion scorch does not apply unless that target is already burned. And this is the rub when it comes to Cobalt B. A lot of her damage comes from Ion Scorch. And if you cannot apply that to an enemy, you can't capture that damage and therefore she loses her effectiveness. So at three stars, yeah, she has the ability to inflict Ion Scorch, but this is heavily dependent on constantly getting your discharge ability. Now, if you have a full fire team, this shouldn't be too difficult, right? If you have Cobalt, you have Huma, and you have King, those are three fire types, then you can go out and every single time that you activate a discharge or you charge up a weapon, you're gonna burn the enemy. And once the enemy is burned, then you can hit him with this Ion Scorch, and then that's going to greatly increase your damage. 
So that's just something to keep in mind that there is some combo that you have to use early on if you go to three stars with Cobalt B. Now at five stars, the damage from Ion Scorch is gonna to increase to 60% of your attack up from 40%. Um, successful attacks with any weapon's dodge skill, any weapon will refresh the duration of Ion Scorch. This is big because as long as you continue to look at kind of the, your, your debuff on the target, then you'll be just fine. Now, if you pair this with like, let's say Subasa, for instance, you know, let's say you have Subasa instead of Shiro here, and you're trying to stack up and get her, her damage uh, buff that she applies, that's all based off her dodge attack. So as long as you're constantly going back to Subasa using your dodge attack to then to refresh your damage buff, then you're also going to refresh Ion Scorch. And that's just something that you can use and something you can work into a combo, which I think will be really cool. Now at six stars, this is where she becomes ultimately effective as such, right? At six stars, any character should be just crazy effective. But Barrage is going to inflict burn for 15 seconds, flat out. Your skill is going to inflict burn. And then successful attacks with any weapon's dodge will reduce the cooldown of Barrage by four seconds in addition to refreshing Ion Scorch. So these are hugely important to really getting the most bang for your buck when it comes to Cobalt B. So if you're not somebody who wants to push for five or six stars as of right now, then I would avoid pulling her because truly it's not worth your time. I would much rather you wait for Lin, or if you want to go fire, uh, let's see how Ruby plays out, because here's the deal. Cobalt is eventually going to find her way into standard banner, and maybe she'll rerun another time. I'm not entirely sure, but truly, I think it's just going to be very expensive and very time consuming to try to get her to a point where she's as effective as a Volt team or a Frost team is right now. So guys, that's sort of how Cobalt B plays. That's what I think about her. Um, now, as you can see, I got her to 100. I didn't want to invest any more resources into her, to be honest. I got her on these Sobek matrices, and things seem to be just humming along um, in terms of my damage output. So five to eight million with this setup here. Now, I'm not a fire team main. Um, I'm actually a frost team main right now. So that's sort of where I am. Um, but just know that's kind of the range you're looking at if you have this set up right here. But guys, this is just me breaking these things down. This is my personal opinion. If you like Cobalt, if you like her play style, if you like and you want to invest in this team, then please, by all means, go out, pull her, get as many duplicates as you want. Um, that's the thing, you know, make sure to have fun in the game. Don't feel like you have to follow trends, metas, min max, all of that fun stuff. This is just me giving my thoughts on this new character. So one other thing, if you do want to test out her play style, um, you can, you can go play the simulacrum story and you'll be able to go out, play her and see if her play style is something you're interested in. Anyway, guys, this video was much longer than I originally thought it was going to be, but I really appreciate all of you guys sticking around. Thank you so much for all the support over the past few months. It really means a lot to me. If you like Tower of Fantasy content, please consider subscribing, and I will talk to you guys next time.